Welcome everyone, my name is Father Miguel, and uh, welcome to this Hearing Loop Open House. The first thing that I'd like to do is to express my gratitude to all those who contributed uh, through your donations to make this a possibility in our parish. As uh, Mike Meyer said, our parish is now a hearing friendly parish, so we want everyone to be able to listen during the Mass and to listen that to the prayers and the homily too, that's important. And so we wanted to make sure that you know, those people that have um, hearing problems are able to, to listen to everything without having to um, use other devices that we have available in the church. Until now, we had an FM system and people could uh, use um, receivers to connect to. Uh, the FM system. But now you don't need those receivers. You can use your hearing aids and provide them your hearing aids and have a key coil installed. But we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. So thank you everyone who contributed through with your donations to make this a, a reality in our church. And without further ado, I'd like to present uh, Mike Meyer, who's the owner of my hearing room, right? And uh, he's the one. This company is the one who has installed the hearing room in our church. Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us, whether it is this evening or perhaps you're watching this a little bit later on the church website. As Father Miguel explained, my name is Mike Mayer, and I own a company called My Hearing Loop, and my company is based in Platteville, Wisconsin. I first met Father Miguel when he came to Platteville, I believe, in 2007, and we worked together at that time on putting a new sound system in at uh, St. Mary's in Platteville. So we've known each other for a number of years. Well, this is certainly exciting because one of the facts is, is that hearing loss is an invisible disability. When you meet someone, you don't know if they have hearing loss or not. How could you possibly know? And so approximately 48 million Americans live with hearing loss every single day. And when you live with hearing loss, trying to concentrate on what has been spoken what has been said can be extremely fatiguing. And certainly, you may not catch everything that has been said. And so hearing loops are a wonderful way to help with this, and most people have not heard about hearing loops. This is a technology that actually is fairly old. This goes back to landline telephones, back all the way back to the 1950s. In landline telephones, there was a little tiny coil of wire inside the handset with the cord, the curly Q cord that connected to your phone. There was also a little tiny coil of wire inside the hearing aid. And that is called a telecoil. And for short, a lot of people call it a T coil. So when people spoke on the telephone in their homes, they were not listening to the little speaker in the handset they were listening to the audio coming through a magnetic field between the two little telecoils between the handset and their hearing aid. Back in the 1970s, the British began to experiment with how can we possibly make this work in a larger room or a larger setting. They finally managed to perfect this in the 1990s, and then we had a quantum leap forward in technology to make this work in large rooms by the mid-2000s. Well, one of the concerns was, will this work everywhere? That answer is yes. Would you believe that your hearing aids equipped with a T-coil that's been enabled or cochlear implants will work anywhere around the globe once you see the hearing loop sign? And so, because there is a standard, there is a standard for hearing loops. So that's part of the beauty 
The other thing is you don't need external equipment in order to take advantage of listening to sound through a hearing loop. Hearing loops are prevalent all over Northern Europe. Matter of fact, in many countries, they are required by federal law in many public places. And this benefits the citizens uh, that live in those countries. And it finally got here to our U.S. shores in 2010. And several companies around the United States, not in every state yet, have begun to install this wonderful uh, hearing assistance technology that acts very differently. The hearing loop that is here in your parish is actually located on the floor of the church. You will notice that in front of some of the pews, you will find a clear tapered vinyl covering that underneath it has a flat copper wire. This looks like gift ribbon. This is actually wire that's carrying a very low level of electrical current and produces a magnetic field. The rest of the hearing loop in church is concealed underneath the carpet so you don't see it. So most people probably would not even notice that it's there in church. It simply turns on and works every time the church sound system is turned on. Now hearing loops work very differently. Father mentioned FM hearing assistance, which is a radio signal that is transmitted from a base station connected to the sound system. It's transmitted out into the nave, into the sanctuary, and people would wear then a box or a personal receiver like this, and they would attach some sort of form of listening device to it, an accessory like earbuds or headphones or something of that nature. Hearing loops are different. Hearing loops are a magnetic field, a magnetic field. One of the reasons why hearing loops are so wonderful is the fact you don't need external equipment or boxes or cables to receive this form of hearing assistance. You simply need to be able to communicate with your audiologist or your hearing provider and we'll learn much more about this tonight from a new e intersection of this. And they have the ability, if your hearing aid is equipped with a T-coil, it can be enabled or activated, and then your audiologist will make settings that are appropriate for your level of hearing loss. And so this is really wonderful because think about it. Each person's hearing loss is unique to that individual. And so by using a hearing loop, you're using your own hearing aid, your own personal prescription that benefits you, that helps you be able to understand spoken word and singing. But it is very, very important that if you decide to adopt wearing hearing aids that you do ask the audiologist about telecoils and T-coils and most audiologists will inform their patients about this and what their options are. But here at the parish, the hearing loop is active. The sound is picked up out of the magnetic field. For example, when Father is celebrating Mass or delivering his homily, when he speaks into a microphone, that sound goes into the magnetic field in the sanctuary, and then the user simply turns on the telecoil setting in their hearing aid, and then the room acoustics, or any outside background noise that really is annoying, goes away or is greatly diminished. Think about that. If you didn't have to cope with background noise in your hearing aid, and you could really sit back and be comfortable and listen to Father's homily without straining to understand. What a wonderful gift that would be. And a hearing loop delivers that level of comfort, which is really good. One of the things that I recommend is that folks ask me all the time, okay, now what do I need to ask my audiologist? What do I need to do? And one of the ways to make it very easy is in the parish office, there are cards 
that look just like this. And these are actually instructions for the audiologist. All you really need to do is say, we have a hearing loop at my church now. Can you help me out? And your audiologist will know what to do. You don't have to know any details about how a hearing loop works. You don't have to know about telecoils or be uh, really knowledgeable about hearing aids. You only need to be able to give your audiologist this card. And that pretty much says it all in terms of what your needs are. And your audiologist will help you from there. So the fact that we don't have to wear external boxes and cables and equipment, we don't have to do anything other than turn our T-coil enabled hearing aid on and off. And there's different ways to do that. And I think I'll let Nui explain some of the ways that, that T-coils can be activated within hearing aids. There's different, some folks use their cell phone, others use a remote, others may have buttons on their hearing aid. And Nui this evening will explain how that works. Are hearing loops safe? I get asked that question all the time. Yes, indeed they are safe. The level of magnetic field and the level of tiny level of electrical current that we use to create this hearing loop is such a low level that it is less than the magnetic field by walking on the grass outside the Ursul magnetic field. So it's actually weaker than walking outside on the grass and feeling the earth's magnetic field. So it's completely safe. So if somebody has a pacemaker or an implanted medical device, you need not worry. It is completely safe. And so that's another wonderful uh, aspect about this. Now you can go anywhere and you can have the advantage of a hearing loop in any venue or any place that you go. I didn't bring a large version, but if you take a look here, you can see a sign that has a blue background and it has the shape of an ear and a capital T. That is the international symbol that that particular room or building has a hearing loop within that building. And all you need to do is look for the signs because American with Disabilities Act requires that there's signage to indicate that there's a hearing loop there. And you just turn on your T-coil setting in your hearing aid and enjoy listening to the events that are taking place without the background noise or other things that might hinder speech intelligibility. Now, what about folks that don't have a hearing aid? There are folks out there that don't have hearing aids yet and uh, knew we may be able to confirm this, but I have heard that sometimes it may be up to seven years or so from the time that people realize that they have hearing loss until they actually are fitted with hearing aids. So sometimes a lot of time can go by. So if you do have some hearing loss, and I do, I have high frequency hearing loss. I need to tell you how loud I played guitar and rock and roll bands in the 70s, but it was loud. <laughs> And uh, I paid the price because I, my high frequency is very, very poor. It's pretty much gone. And so for somebody like me, I do use a loop listener at the hearing loop at my own church. And a loop listener actually looks like an FM system. And this is, whoop, excuse me, this is one of the loop listeners. Sure looks familiar, doesn't it? Looks just like the FM personal receiver, but it's not. It is a T-coil inside a box with a volume control. And so at this point in time, you can typically pick one of these up from an usher. And the bearish here has a total of four of these, I believe. And there are also a variety of accessories that can be plugged in that you can listen with. And I'll explain those here in just a moment. So if you do not have hearing aids, or maybe your hearing aid is not equipped with a T-coil that's enabled, you can use a loop listener. And so that is a very, very good thing to be able to help out folks that may not have hearing aids. So the next part of this, I think I need three hands for it, but we'll, we'll make new here, 
is that there's a little tiny plug-in, and so there's a variety of different things that we can connect to a loop listener to allow us to be able to hear during a celebration of Mass. And one of them is lightweight headphones. Now, I've been working in audio for 43 years. I haven't met anybody in church yet that likes wearing headphones in church. Not that I have met. Now, perhaps there is somebody out there that does wear headphones in church, but I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, there are some sample headphones here for folks to try out if they wish. I have found some other devices that have been uh, pretty popular and other devices that have been around for a long time that are not so popular. How many, of us, how many of us have seen teenagers running around with these things poking out of their ears? Yeah, you bet. So, I think uh, Nui would probably be the first to tell you that we, she has a whole new group of patients she'll be seeing a few years down the road here that put these earbuds inside their ears and crank up the volume very loud and crank up the bass. So, she will definitely be seeing some younger people. Uh, the, Incidence of hearing loss in the younger Generation Z is climbing, and unfortunately, it may continue to climb. Earbuds such as these, uh, these are a special earbud from Samsung, and I provide these uh, to parishes that want to, or folks that want to use something like this to plug in to their loop listener, and they're very inexpensive. They can be, if you want to have your own for sanitary reasons, especially very important right now with the uh, coronavirus, you can actually purchase your own earbuds for $3.29. So they're very inexpensive. And I always encourage people to get their own personal listening device to plug into that loop listener, bring it to church in your purse or your coat pocket, have your own listening device so that for sanitary reasons, and especially now for safety, you have something that is yours that you own because these products are inexpensive. Now the next device I'm going to show you is actually pretty popular, especially since it can be easily sanitized with an alcohol wipe, a small alcohol wipe. This is actually called an ear speaker. Hold it up here so you can see it. Now your, your speaker plugs into your loop listener. Remember, once again, these are for folks with loop listener for people that do not have hearing aids. And you simply put the upper part over the upper part of your earlobe, and then take your thumb and push your lower part of your earlobe through. And this is much more discreet, of course, than wearing headphones. The speaker in it is the size of a nickel and actually puts out a great deal of sound. Now, a loop listener isn't going to be the same as having your own hearing aid prescription unique to your particular hearing loss, but it does provide extra sound to help you out if you have a mild hearing loss. So this device is very popular. Once again, these can be, there's samples here at church that you could try. And my friend Kay here says she'll sanitize every single one of these for you every time somebody tries one. And so these are only $19, so they're not expensive. But they are very popular. As the years have gone by and I've been installing hearing loops, one of the things that I have discovered, especially for senior citizens that I work with that have hearing loss, is sometimes for folks as they get into their 80s and 90s, the dexterity in their fingers is not quite as good as it used to be. And this began to be a little bit of an issue because they would like to be able to put their own listening attachment on their ear and plug it into the loop listener that they pick up from the usher. But they don't necessarily want somebody to help them or come into their personal space. And so this device is actually called for lack, officially it's called a ear cup, but basically it's an ear speaker, but there's two of them. And as you can tell, they're a nice bright color blue. I wish they were a different color. But what is so wonderful about these is in order to put them on, 
All you need to do is take the rubber band and just put it over the top of your ear, just like this. It hangs on the outside of your ear and it's extremely easy to put on. I've had folks in their 80s and 90s that love using these. They can put them on themselves. And I can go over hearing aids? They also can go over hearing aids as well. So let's say you do not have T-coils in your hearing aid, or perhaps the T-coils are not yet activated, that device, or even the ear speaker, can certainly be used and go over the top of your hearing aid. So you do have choices, which is really good. You do have choices. So going back to what is so important is the number one thing you need to do is contact your audiologist or your hearing provider, make an appointment, pick up a card at the church office. Uh, perhaps uh, if you use email, maybe Maria can email you this, because she has, she has that as well, um, or father could. And just take this into your audiologist or hearing provider, and that explains to them what you need. You don't have to remember what to ask for. The other thing is that I love to get feedback from people, excuse the pun on the word feedback, that's an audio term I guess, but I love to hear, I love to hear comments. So if, as you have the opportunity to use the hearing loop, uh, please let Father know, you know, how this is helping you, because it really will help Father assess, you know, how this is helping his parishioners and enables him to really get a grasp on how well this is helping out. As many of us know, a lot of us that have hearing loss don't necessarily share that with others. We don't necessarily go around talking about it, but if the hearing loop is helping you, it's wonderful to tell others about how it has helped you because maybe they'll start using the hearing loop. Um, and certainly share your comments with the father as well. Um, in the church office as well, there'll be some information about my hearing loop company that can be picked up if you wish, and my business cards as well. So simply, you may have a friend or a family member that uh, attends uh, mass or attends worship at a church and perhaps might be interested in this, so there's a way to get in touch with me as well. So I cover northeastern Iowa and all of southern Wisconsin and on the western side of Wisconsin as well. They're also in the church office. Uh, I brought, dropped across some brochures about Let's Loop America's Worship Centers. And it's more information about hearing loops. And so I invite you to try the hearing loops and I would like to thank Father Miguel and for all the members of the parish who have contributed financially to the hearing loop to be welcoming to everybody, not only your fellow parishioners, but also people in the community. And with hearing loops, you will also find that your visitor count will start to go up, usually within about 45 days. Because if people can hear somewhere, it is a place they would like to go to. So once again, my name is Mike Mayer, and thank you very much for your time and attention, and I will turn it over here to Nui. Okay, Nui has a question for me. Yeah, do you install um, loops at home? Okay, Nui asked, do I install loops in homes? That is a market that I am capable of doing, but I haven't pursued it yet because we've been so busy with churches the last few years. Um, but that is a possibility as well. You can install your loop in a home. One thing we call the confessional. Yes, uh, and Kay just reminded me to talk a little bit about the confessional, but before I go there, there's also a type of loop called a countertop loop. How many of us have gone to see the pharmacist or gone to a bank teller window and struggled to understand what we're being told about our medication or a financial matter? Hey, I'm in that category. And so there are countertop hearing loops too that are very appropriate because they have a very short range and they maintain confidentiality. And so they're extremely helpful. 
But as of this point in time, uh, there's very few banks and virtually no pharmacies that have adopted this yet. And I think right now, with our current situation with coronavirus, we have plexiglass shields, we have masks, so people that do read lips, pretty hard to do with a mask on. And so the small countertop hearing looms is a way to help us. So we used a product like that to loop one of the confessionals here at the parish. And so there is a sign, and it looks just like a sign, that is right next to the chair on the parishioner's side of the confessional. And embedded in that sign is wiring that creates a magnetic field. It has a very short range, so it's very confidential. You do not have to worry about somebody with a T-coil turned on outside the confessional picking up Fodder's conversation. They won't. They, can, they can't. And Fodder has a small microphone on his side of the confessional. And so Fodder goes ahead and uh, reconciliation, you just, everything is exactly as you've always been used to. It's just that we had to place the hearing loop right next to the chair instead of the kneeler, just to make certain that it was accessible to everybody that uses the confessional. The other thing I would like to mention that we have discovered in the last two weeks as we've been working with the parish here is that the confessional has two fans. There's one on the floor, there's also one in the ceiling. And for some people that might have a rather significant hearing loss, if either the overhead fan is turned on or the floor fan, it obliterates human speech. You can't understand what Father is saying. And so if you would just simply ask Father to turn off uh, both fans so it's very quiet, Father can just relax in his chair and speak softly as he always does, and you'll be able to hear just fine. And so I did want to share that as well. So there is a small loop in the confessional to help you. Are there any other questions from our group here tonight? Everybody's all educated about loops. Well, you have my phone number, so you're welcome to call anytime. So please certainly do that. And I'll turn this over here to Billy. New I'm the audiologist at the South Prairie Hospital. Um, so thanks for the invite. So today I just want to briefly go over telecoil and hearing devices. So I will talk about the benefits of a loop system, uh, three programs that most hearing aid users can have in their hearing aids if you are a hearing aid user um, or a cochlear implant user. Um, telecoils and hearing aids, and telecoil using telephone and if you have a smartphone. So, like Mike said, the benefits of a loop system is it reduces background noise. So a lot of patients who have hearing loss do complain about background noise. The distortion also is reduced and competing sounds are also reduced because you get that direct input. Um, one of the, another benefit is the increased signal to noise ratio. So with the hearing loop, on average, it improves by 15 to 25 decibel. So decibel is the intensity of sound, whereas a hearing aid alone, the most advanced hearing aid can only improve the signal to noise ratio to about, it's only about three to five decibel improvement. So you can see that it's a huge improvement with the loop system. And again, it also limits it limits feedback. So feedback is basically the noises that your hearing aid can produce. So for those who have hearing aids and have cochlear implant, you want to talk to your audiologist. Um, most hearing aids have different programs. So the most common one is the microphone. So the microphone only is probably your everyday program when you put it in and have the microphone. The second program that you could get is a telecoil only. So that will turn off the, turn off the microphone and you, the telecoil is the only thing that's activated. The third program would be the microphone plus the telecoil program. 
So both are active, so you do will still hear others in your environment. Some hearing aids, you can reduce how loud or how much gain or volume the microphone is in that program. So Mike and I talked earlier, so if you, if you go to your audiologist, you wanna make sure that your hearing aid only, if you can get the telecoil only program, that's gonna benefit you the most. However, if you don't have the telecoil only program, the mic and telecoil program should be able to help you too. So again, talk to your audiologist. But if it's me, call our office and we'll get you in. And then telecoil and hearing aids. So again, it is available for most hearing aids and cochlear implants. So if you have the tiny, tiny, almost invisible hearing aids, you most likely do not have the telecoil option just because there's absolutely no space. So the smaller you go, it's harder for, for us to fit all the, the parts needed. Um, so to activate the telecoil, you most likely have to either manually activate it with the push button. If your programs are, if you have programs and you are controlling them through um, a remote control or an app through your smartphone, then you should be able to change your programs through that. Um, some hearing aids have an automatic activation, so you may not have to activate it depending on your hearing aid. Again, you want to talk to your audiologist. So a lot of patients who have hearing loss will struggle with a landline. So some landlines have the telecoil, telecoil option as well. So if you are still using a landline, you want to double check with your phone to see if it's compatible. And if you are my patient, you can certainly give me a call and we can walk through it together. Um, if you have a cell phone, and you're not, you don't, your hearing aids are not Bluetooth enabled, so you can't get that direct streaming from your cell phone. Um, cell phones now do have a telecoil built in, but you want to check your tele, telecoil rating on your, tel, on your cell phone. So the higher the T rating, the stronger the signal will be to you, to your hearing aid. So T4 would be the highest, so the higher you go, the better. So just reminders, you always want to confirm with your audiologist that you actually have the telecoil option that can be enabled in your devices. And then you want to check if your telecoil needs to be manually activated or if it's an automatic activation. And even if you are not my patient or and you live in the area, you just want to have some answers or questions answered, you can always give our clinic a call or you can always email me. Thank you for inviting me. Do you guys have any questions? The Bob? Yeah. If, if you have the MT coil, mm -hmm. which I believe is what I have to talk about today, is all in my area. What usually is, I mean, when I program them, like, what rate, what percentage do they pick up of the T coil? Or yeah, so, you can control that? Or so most that? hearing, most audiologists, can control the level of the microphone. So we try to turn it down as, as much as we can. Okay. So I would follow up with your audiologist or you can certainly come to the hospital here if you would like. What is the, you have know, an average percentage that they would use? With the um, it's not, the it's not a percentage, it's actually a decibel, the intensity level of the sound. So each manufacturer is slightly different. Uh, so I, I looked up Phonak today, but I haven't looked up Starkey. And not, unfortunately, not every hearing aid has that ability to turn down the microphone microphone level. Um, it's just, I, we would just have to pull it up into the software. What I, what I found out today, another program that's just Right. Itself, because I was having trouble with the speakers. I heard. Picking up Did your audiologist pull up your settings to were, you, were they able well, to do I that? Have, I have. Yeah. Yeah. There you yeah, go. I'm not a there you go. It's possible. Any other questions?
that's it. Yeah. Thank you. You can always contact me if you have any questions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always direct them to our office. And we'll do our best to answer your questions. Um, Kay Lengstetter, uh, just remind me that in the... The accessories for their beer. There, the, the, the uh, accessories for the beer and food are, uh, you will find them um, in the in the counter where the readers have their uh, the book and also their the list. So it's next to the confessional, the main confessional. So and it's it's where I usually, when I'm ready to say mass, I I exit through through that door. So you'll find the if you have any doubts as to where to find those accessories, you can always ask me, and I will direct them. Uh, I'll direct you to that. And uh, that's it. Well, thank you very much again. If you have any questions, direct them to the your office, and we'll do our best to answer them. If we cannot answer them, uh, I will direct them to to Mike. All right. Thank you very much.